today, uh, Civil 3D 2010, we're going to be talking about corridor boundaries. Uh, corridor boundaries uh, can be created uh, uh, probably 10, 15 different ways. Uh, we're really talking about surface boundaries here. Uh, uh, if we're talking about surface boundaries, it makes sense to talk about standard surface boundaries. You know, a simple polyline, a rectangle like this, can be a boundary for a surface. Notice that I have kind of a roadway here. Uh, if I pick the contours and go up to Add Data, Add Boundaries, I can just choose this rectangle as my boundary for my surface. And you'll notice that it created a boundary for the surface where that rectangle is, which is, is great. Uh, with corridors, however, if the corridor changes in any way, this boundary is not dynamic with the corridor. It's a simple polyline. Uh, probably the simplest version of a corridor boundary, uh, I'll show you right now. If we go up to our corridor properties, and go to the boundaries tab, you'll see your surfaces listed for your corridor. I only have one here. If I right click, there's add automatic, which will automatically read uh, maybe the the daylight okay and if I say add automatic and read the daylight you'll notice that it cut my surface and if we looked at that in the 3d viewer uh, there is no surface in between meaning that uh, our boundary was created correctly now that's not always going to be there if I go back in here add automatic isn't always going to be an option for you uh, if if you had a different assembly uh, here, uh, you know maybe let's take a look at this. If if I had applied maybe a, a different cross section to this portion of the road than I did here, then that would not be an option. Uh, I'd have to use something like this, add interactive. Now the way that that works is actually really simple. You just pick an outside feature line, then whatever feature line you want to keep and maintain as your uh, boundary. Now I use the snap command to snap to the feature line. Notice it will come up with a list. I'm going to use my daylight as my feature line. And if I just drag my cursor along that daylight, you'll notice a little red line, dashed line, is going to be following my cursor. When I get to the end, I'll click, and I'll come over to this side, do the same thing, pick the daylight, and then drag all the way to the end. And that works too. When you get to the very end, you hit C for close, and we've added a, a boundary. Okay, so this is, this is a good tool uh, for simple corridors, things that are not going to be uh, changing a ton or don't have really complex design features within them. Notice that if, if the alignment changes in any way, uh, the corridor will follow that uh, new daylight and use that as its boundary. Okay, there we go. So that's corridor issue number one. Corridor issue number two is a situation like I have down here. A boundary in this area would give me an error. Okay, if, if you notice, I'll go to Corridor Properties and notice that I have Corridor Extents as outer boundary now. Uh, this is a more complex corridor. It's not just one cross section applied along an alignment or profile, so it gives me that as an option. Uh, this option isn't going to work for me, and I'll tell you why. If I were to pick that option, it would choose either this area here or this area here to create a boundary. Because my corridor was built, uh, understanding that you know this is one baseline and region, this is another baseline and region, and it's separated by some dead space. And the corridor is triangulating between those two spaces, uh, but it, it's it's not going to understand to create a boundary around the whole thing. So uh, I'm going to use my interactive option here, intentionally knowing that this is going to create an issue for us. Okay, so here's the problem. You get all the way down here, and notice that it crossed on itself. If I were to continue on with this boundary, uh, I'll do it just so we can see what happens. 
it's going to give me an invalid boundary error. Okay, that's because the boundary of any surface cannot cross on itself. That would be kind of like, you know, making a boundary around this surface that kind of did uh, this. Okay, that would be the equivalent. This situation can't happen. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because what's going on is, does it build this area as a boundary, this area as a boundary, or this little tiny area as the outer boundary? It doesn't know. So you can't have it cross itself. Uh, so we've got to fix this error. It also is creating some weird surface issues, right? Because I'm triangulating a, a 3 to 1 slope from here to here and a 3 to 1 slope from here to here. They overlap because of the height of my fill. So I've got to go in and I've got to fix that. So I'm going to pick this corridor, go to my corridor properties, and I'm going to split, okay, split this region between here and here. And we're going to just not build that middle region and see what happens. And you'll notice that it, it fixes that bow tie. Although the contours still aren't triangulating the way I'd like them to. I'd really like them to wrap around this curve. So because this is a corridor that I'm using and I'm reading the elevations along this alignment, okay, I have to create something that's, that's a simple, simple assembly. Okay, I'm going to just create a brand new assembly over here. I call it node. And that assembly, all it's going to have on it is on my uh, assemblies pull down. I'm going to go down to generic and I'm going to add a marked point. Now, when I pick marked point, it doesn't seem to do anything, but notice I put a little tiny dot. Okay, this marked point can be marked as P2 maybe. So if I code, change the point code to P2, I can use that as a feature line on my surface. There we go. Pick the corridor, corridor properties. Okay. Rebuild that area, but instead of using the daylight assembly, I'm going to use that new node assembly. We will take a look at the surface. I am already reading my feature line for P2. The way I added that was pick feature lines, specify P2, and hit the plus button. When I say OK, now it's going to read those surface contours correctly. There we go. Now I'm ready to go. We still have that boundary issue, so let's go look at the boundary issue. Right now, I'm triangulating across a flight area that I don't need. So boundaries tab on my corridor. I'm going to say add interactive. Pick the outer daylight. Continue on here, and I'll pick this side. Notice I spanned that area. There we go. We'll use P2 and go over to here, P2, and close. So there we go. That is a surface boundary that's going to be dynamic. So if this uh, profile changes in any way. Maybe I, I drag this down. Okay, you'll notice that the corridor boundaries will update. Uh, I can update my sidewalk area. There we go, corridor updates. Uh, and we maintain those, uh, those boundaries. And it's as simple as changing the stationing for these corridor regions to update this area. All right, that is the basics of corridor boundaries. Any questions, feel sh free to shoot me an email at ghatch uh, at microcad3d.com. Thank you.